Okay, just as a little disclaimer, guys, I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy who likes working on his car. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to tell you how to replace the timing belt, time belt tensioner, how to take all the pulleys off to get to the timing belt, and also I'll provide a few comments on how to install an oversized crank pulley. My 4AGZE sounded like there's a load of birds and crickets living in there, which is probably the timing belt tensioner. So I'm going to show you how to replace that along with the timing belt. Remove the intercooler. That's these four bolts on the top here, as well as the hose connections. Unplug the HT leads, taking note which one goes where, and take off the spark plug valley cover. Remove the spark plugs, 16 millimeters. Lay a cloth over the top. You don't want to drop anything down there. Going underneath the car now, we're going to be taking off the water pump pulley. Uh, you can just loosen the bolts initially whilst you've got tension on the belt. For your reference, that's the water pump pulley there, and that's the four bolts. If you're having trouble getting it out, if it keeps rotating, even when you've got the belt on there, you can wedge one 10 mil spanner against another pulley and then use another one to loosen it. Remove these two idler pulleys, that's these two highlighted there. They've got a bolt to tension them and then a bolt to remove them. Doesn't particularly matter which order you do it in. Here's me loosening the tensioner bolt. You can see the state of my auxiliary belt there. It's got a rip in it, you can see why I'm replacing it. Watch me struggle taking the belt off, it's like me undoing a bra. Here's me taking off the second idler pulley. I'll put the part numbers for these in the description. Again, watch me struggle taking the belt off. Okay, now you can finally remove this ball pump pulley. The bolts should be loosened from before, but again, if you have any issues, just use two spanners like shown. Sorry about the poor camera work, it's hard to undo the bolts whilst filming it at the same time. Once you've removed the water pump pulley, you can now go about loosening the crank bolt 17 millimeters. Ideally you want to use an impact, but if space is tight, you can use a breaker bar, wedge it against the floor. You can use a starter motor to unloosen it. You've got to pull out the EFI fuse, that's the one in the engine bay there. Using the start motor, turn the engine, and it'll loosen the bolt. That's shown. Now you must align the notch on the crank pulley with the zero mark on the engine block. You may need to rotate the engine to do this, but make sure you do it clockwise by using the crank bolt only. Remove the valve cover nuts. There's four of them on each. With the valve covers off, you can check the intake side, the valve lifters on number one cylinder. They should be loose, provided everything's in the right position. If they're not, you're gonna have to rotate the engine another full turn. I also recommend sticking a long object through the spark plug hole of cylinder number one, such as a socket extension bar. You don't want anything too thin that can go in at an angle and get jammed up in there whilst you rotate the engine. So this will help you observe when the piston number one is at top dead center and also you're looking for those valve lifters as shown in the background there. You want those to be free to be rotated. If everything looks like it's in the right place, you can remove the crank pulley. You need the special tool. They're not expensive to buy. I think this one cost me about maybe 15, 20 pounds. Uh, you won't be able to get it off otherwise, well, without damaging it. Although I managed to damage mine anyway, even with the tool dropping on the floor. Butterfingers. Now for the worst part, removing the timing belt covers. Honestly, I struggled so much with this. Access is really difficult on front wheel drive cars. Um, thankfully, whoever owned it last couldn't even be bothered to do half of them up. So I only had to remove a few, but needless to say, not enjoyable. There's a bracket you need to remove on top of the engine mount. There's two bolts for it there, just underneath this water hose and then there's a third bolt which is hidden to the right hand side here. 
The top and bottom covers were probably the easier ones. The middle one was an absolute cut. Hopefully when you take the covers off, everything's aligned. You got the little notch on the intake cam sprocket, aligns with the head there. And on the exhaust cam sprocket, you got a notch again, which aligns with that wheel there. Take off the timing belt guide and have a look at the crank sprocket. Now with the other two marks aligned on the cam sprockets, take note of the position of the mark on the crank sprocket down below and its position relative to the dot on the engine block itself. Mine was actually slightly to the right when everything was at top dead center and all the other timing marks aligned. Uh, in the book it tells you it should be directly in line with it but mine wasn't so I guess the marks aren't all that accurate. And there's only so many places you can put the belt on anyway. There's only so many teeth. So take a picture so you know where the belt should be once you've finished installing the new one and the tensioner. If you're not sure, just check, check, double check. Rotate the engine a couple of times before taking the belt off. Just get it in your head exactly where everything needs to be. Again, using a long object in cylinder number one will help you determine top dead center. And then you can compare how the dots align compared to top dead center. Take your time with this. Take lots of photos so you know where you need to come back to once you're done. Additionally, on the exhaust cam sprocket, this knock pin, which I'll highlight in a second here, should be on the lower side. On the intake cam, it's on the upper side. That's shown. That'll help you align everything. Once you're happy, you can loosen the tensioner bearing. Look at the state of mine, no wonder it's making a racket. Using a 10mm ring spanner, you can loosen it. Some tension will still be there, held by the spring. But yeah, you must use the ring end or else you won't be able to undo it. With the tensioner bearing nut loosened, you want to take a long object, stick it in next to it on the right hand side and you want to lever the tensioner bearing completely to the left as far as it will go. And once it's all the way to the left, you want to then re-tighten the tensioner nut. It's helpful to have two people in this situation, but it is possible one. But the longer the object, the better, the more leverage you've got. With the tension off the belt, you should be able to remove it now. If you've got a front wheel drive car, there'll be one last thing preventing you getting the belt off, and that would be the engine mount. Uh, sadly, you have to undo it in order to get it out because it's looped around it. Uh, mine had this annoying little bracket on top I had to get rid of first. Then I had to undo these two bolts underneath, or nuts I should say. Remove those but support the engine with a jack if you undo the mount. I supported it on the alternator, there's a thick bit I used. Um, I preferred that than using the oil sump, which is quite thin. It's very easy to damage it. Finally, you need to remove this long bolt that goes through the center of the mount. And then this will allow you to maneuver the mount out of the way in order for you to get the belt out. If you've installed a new tensioner pulley, then you're going to have to re-hook the spring onto a little nubbin to the right hand side of it. Apologies about the terrible camera work. It's hard to do it all at once. But there's a little nubbin just on the right hand side highlighted there which you hook it back onto again once you've installed the new bearing you need to move it all the way to the left and then lock the nut that allows you to get a new belt on when you get the new belt on double check all your timing marks are in the same place as before and also when you install the belt make sure there's tension from the two cam sprockets first then down to the crank then finally maneuver it around the tensioner. Once you've installed the belt and you've got it around the tensioner, uh, when you release the tensioner nut, it may move the crank slightly as the belt's under tension, but you can just double check to make sure this is in the same place as it was before you took the belt off. Once you're happy the belt is in the right place, do two full uh, clockwise revolutions and just check that all the timing marks align as before. If they don't, just take the belt off and then reinstall that again, make sure all the timing marks are as they were when you took it off. Again, always helpful to have a long object in the spark plug hole of cylinder one. 
that way you can physically see top dead center and you'll be able to see whether you've installed the belt a little bit too early or a little bit too late and it helped me a ton. On another note, make sure you've got about four millimeters of deflection on the timing belt. The spring itself wasn't enough for me to provide that amount of tension so I actually had to lever the tensioner bearing slightly more to the right and actually push onto the belt to give that extra tension. Unique to the 4AGZE is the camshaft position sensor. It's located next to the exhaust camshaft and it's removed by a single bolt and obviously you've got to unplug it as well. Once you remove it, there are two marks you need to align. There's a straight line on the sensor nose and then there's actually a dot on its gear wheel. You can twist and rotate them, align them up like shown and then slide it back in as straight as you can. Though once you've slid it back in you can actually adjust the position of the line relative to the dot. So if you made it this far then you're reinstalling everything isn't going to be too much of an issue just literally the reverse of the removal. Uh, you'll know if you haven't aligned things properly because your engine will run terribly or won't run at all uh, but if you've double checked all your timing marks then you should have an issue and don't worry there's no chance of pistons hitting valves as the 4AGE and 4AGZE are non-interference engines so you can't totally destroy it if you mess it up but needless to say if your engine's running terribly if you've got a lack of power or you can hear pinging noises then you need to take the belt off and recheck it all I'm afraid but hopefully that's not the case for you right I thought I'd just talk about the techno toy tuning oversized crank pulley and how to install it if you've watched a video then you'll know how to get the crank pulley off um, so it's just a case of tapping the new one on but there's also a few modifications you need to do um, to the existing setup in order to fit it um, but obviously once you've installed it you need the correct size belts and the idler pulley but they usually come as a kit so that should be fine. You're going to have to chop off the pointer that extrudes from the tensioner pulley nut. The long objects there. Chop that off like shown. I can't actually see when you'd need to use the timing pointer because this generation, the second generation of the 4 GZE has the DLI system so there's no distributor. So I can't see you setting the timing with the timing light. So as far as I'm aware you don't need it, but I'm not an expert though, but maybe someone can correct me. Last little modification you need to do is widen the hole on the lower timing belt cover uh, because the boss is actually a bit bigger on the Techno Toy tuning uh, oversized pulley. So you're just going to make that bottom hole a little bit bigger. And again, just to demonstrate, it's just to accommodate the larger size of the boss where the key sits on, on the other side of the pulley as shown so and that's about it really guys so appreciate you watching the video and i will see you next time